In December 2020, China announced it was developing an engine capable of propelling aircraft at Mach 16, that's 16 times the speed of sound, fast enough to circle the entire planet in under two hours. The fastest operational aircraft ever built, NASA's X-43A, reached Mach 9.6 for just 11 seconds before the engine failed. China's new oblique detonation ramjet engine promises to sustain Mach 16 flight indefinitely. If the claims prove accurate, this represents more than an incremental advance. It's a potential paradigm shift, one that could redefine military strategy, commercial aviation, and space access within a single generation. Western aerospace experts have called it the most significant propulsion breakthrough since the invention of the jet engine itself. But how did China, a country that for decades struggled to produce reliable engines for conventional aircraft, suddenly leapfrog the United States in one of the most technically demanding fields in aerospace? This is the story of an engine that shouldn't exist yet, the wind tunnel that made it possible, and what it means for the future of flight. To understand the significance of China's announcement, you need to understand where Chinese aviation was just a few decades ago. In the late 1950s, China made a strategic decision to prioritize aerospace development as a pillar of national modernization. At the time, the country's industrial base was limited, its technological infrastructure underdeveloped, and its access to foreign expertise severely restricted. Building an indigenous aviation industry from scratch was an enormous challenge. Western nations, particularly the United States, watched China's ambitions with growing concern. As Chinese aerospace capabilities began to mature, Western governments responded with sanctions. The United States placed multiple Chinese aviation companies on military blacklists, restricting their ability to acquire critical technologies, high-end sensors, precision navigation systems, advanced avionics, and laser components. These weren't peripheral items. They were core elements of modern aerospace design, the kinds of components that separate functional aircraft from advanced ones. The restrictions extended beyond individual companies. The United States coordinated with allies, Japan, South Korea, and European nations to implement strict export controls on advanced semiconductors, microelectronics, and manufacturing equipment. The goal was clear, prevent China from closing the technological gap. But the sanctions had an unintended consequence. Rather than stalling Chinese progress, they forced China to pursue self-reliance. Starting in 1983, China announced the successful development of the turbojet 14 engine, designed for the J-8 series fighters. By Western standards, the TJ-14 was primitive, inefficient, underpowered, and prone to reliability issues. But it represented something more important than performance, proof that China could design and manufacture jet engines domestically. Over the following decades, Chinese engineers accumulated experience. They studied foreign designs, reverse-engineered imported engines, recruited talent from abroad, and invested heavily in research infrastructure. By the early 2000s, progress was visible. China unveiled the Turbofan 15, an advanced engine using high-temperature alloy materials and achieving significant improvements in combustion efficiency and thrust. The WS-15, as it became known, was designed to power China's fifth-generation J-20 stealth fighter, giving the aircraft the performance needed to compete with American F-22 Raptors and F-35 Lightning Dassus. But conventional turbofan engines, no matter how advanced, have inherent limitations. They're designed for subsonic and supersonic flight, speeds up to around Mach 2 or Mach 3. Beyond that, the physics change. Air friction generates extreme heat. Traditional combustion becomes inefficient and mechanical components start to fail under the stress. Hypersonic flight, speeds above Mach 5, requires a completely different approach. And that's where China's new engine comes in. The United States has long dominated hypersonic propulsion research. 
In July 2020, the American company Boom Supersonic unveiled the XB-1, a demonstrator aircraft designed to prove the viability of commercial supersonic travel. Powered by General Electric's J85-15 engine, the XB-1 was designed to reach Mach 2.2 fast enough to cross the Atlantic from New York to London in just over three hours. It was an impressive achievement, and it represented the cutting edge of American supersonic technology. But Mach 2.2 is still firmly in the supersonic range. Hypersonic speeds, Mach 5 and above, present exponentially greater challenges. At those speeds, air molecules don't just compress. They begin to ionize, forming a plasma sheath around the aircraft. Temperatures soar to thousands of degrees Celsius. Traditional jet engines can't operate because they rely on mechanical compressors, which fail at such extreme conditions. The solution is a ramjet, an engine with no moving parts. Ramjets work by forcing air into a combustion chamber at high speed, compressing it through sheer velocity rather than mechanical means. Fuel is injected, ignited, and expelled, generating thrust. But even ramjets have limits. At speeds above Mach 5, airflow through the engine becomes supersonic, requiring a scramjet, a supersonic combustion ramjet. Scramjets are notoriously difficult to develop. The air moves through the engine so fast that fuel has only milliseconds to mix, ignite, and combust before being expelled. It's been compared to lighting a match in a hurricane. The United States has experimented with scramjets for decades. In 2004, NASA's X-43A reached Mach 9.6 for 11 seconds before the engine failed. In 2013, the U.S. Air Force's X-51A Waiver Rider sustained Mach 5.1 for six minutes, a record at the time, but still far short of operational viability. Then China announced something different. Not a scramjet, but an oblique detonation ramjet, a fundamentally new type of engine that uses detonation rather than combustion. The difference between combustion and detonation is subtle, but, well, profound. In traditional engines, fuel burns in a process called deflagration, a relatively slow, controlled reaction where flames propagate at subsonic speeds. In a detonation engine, the fuel doesn't burn, it detonates. The reaction propagates as a supersonic shock wave, releasing energy far more rapidly and efficiently. Detonation engines can extract more than 70% of the fuel's chemical energy in an incredibly short time and within a very small space. Thermal efficiency is more than double that of conventional combustion. That translates directly into more thrust, less fuel consumption, and higher speeds. The concept isn't new. Scientists have understood the theoretical advantages of detonation engines for decades. The problem has always been control. Detonations are violent, unstable, and difficult to sustain. Early attempts produced engines that tore themselves apart or failed after just a few seconds. China's solution was the oblique detonation ramjet, a design that uses carefully angled shock waves to stabilize the detonation process. Instead of injecting fuel into the airflow inside the combustion chamber, fuel is pre-mixed and introduced at an angle, creating a detonation wave that propagates obliquely through the engine. This approach smooths out the violence of the reaction, making it, you know, controllable and sustainable. We, oui, but designing such an engine is one thing, testing it is another. Hypersonic engines can't be tested in normal conditions. They require wind tunnels capable of simulating the extreme speeds, pressures, and temperatures of hypersonic flight. For decades, the most advanced facility in the world was NASA's X-15 wind tunnel, built way back in the 1960s. It could simulate conditions up to Mach 15, barely sufficient for testing early scramjet concepts. China needed something better. So it built the JF-22 Ultra High Speed Wind Tunnel, the largest and most advanced facility of its kind in the world. The JF-22 can simulate flight conditions at Mach 30, twice the capability of anything the United States possesses. It's located at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Mechanics in Beijing, and it represents a $200 million investment in hypersonic research infrastructure.
Inside the JF-22, engineers tested the oblique detonation ramjet under conditions no other facility could replicate. And well, the results were extraordinary. According to reports, the engine achieved sustained speeds of Mach 16 during testing. That's more than 12,000 miles per hour, fast enough to fly from Beijing to New York in less than 90 minutes. It's seven times faster than the American XB-1's top speed of Mach 2.2. And critically, the engine maintained stable operation throughout the test, suggesting it could sustain hypersonic flight indefinitely. If those claims are accurate, the implications are staggering. An aircraft powered by this engine could reach any point on Earth within two hours of takeoff. Military applications are obvious. Hypersonic bombers that strike without warning, reconnaissance platforms that overfly enemy territory before defenses can react, and missiles that cannot be intercepted by current defense systems. But the potential extends beyond the military. Commercial hypersonic flight could revolutionize global travel. Imagine boarding a plane in London and landing in Sydney two hours later, or crossing the Pacific in the time it currently takes to fly from New York to Los Angeles. Hypersonic flight could make the world smaller in ways that even modern jet travel hasn't achieved. Space access could also be transformed. Current rockets are expensive, single-use, and inefficient. A hypersonic aircraft could potentially serve as the first stage of a reusable space launch system, carrying payloads to the edge of space before releasing them into orbit. This approach, sometimes called horizontal takeoff, could reduce launch costs by orders of magnitude, but all of this depends on whether the technology is real, reliable, and scalable. Skepticism is warranted. China has a history of announcing ambitious aerospace projects that turn out to be more aspirational than operational. And, you know, hypersonic propulsion is notoriously difficult. The United States has spent billions of dollars and decades of research on scramjets and still hasn't fielded an operational system. For China to leapfrog that effort in just a few years really strains credulity, but there are reasons to take the claim seriously. First, China has invested heavily in hypersonic research infrastructure, not just the JF-22 wind tunnel, but also supercomputers, material science labs, and test ranges. Second, China has demonstrated operational hypersonic weapons. The DF-17 missile, equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle, entered service in 2019. That proves China has solved at least some of the technical challenges associated with hypersonic flight. Third, the oblique detonation ramjet concept is scientifically sound. Western researchers have published papers on similar designs, acknowledging their theoretical advantages. The question isn't whether such an engine could work, it's whether China has actually built one that works reliably. Details remain scarce. China hasn't released technical specifications, test footage, or peer-reviewed research on the engine. That's typical for military-related projects, but it makes independent verification impossible. Western intelligence agencies are undoubtedly analyzing satellite imagery, intercepted communications, and open-source publications to assess China's claims. But for now, much remains unknown. What is clear is that China has made hypersonic propulsion a national priority. The country has poured resources into research, built world-class testing facilities, and recruited top talent. Whether the oblique detonation ramjet is operational today or still years away from deployment, the trajectory is unmistakable. China is serious about leading the hypersonic revolution. For the United States, this represents a strategic challenge. American aerospace superiority has been a cornerstone of military dominance for decades. If China develops operational hypersonic aircraft before the United States does, that advantage erodes. Hypersonic systems are difficult to detect and nearly impossible to intercept with current technology. A hypersonic bomber could strike targets deep inside defended airspace with little warning. A hypersonic reconnaissance platform could overfly sensitive installations before fighters could even scramble. The United States military is aware of the threat, 
In recent years, the Department of Defense has dramatically increased funding for hypersonic research, with programs aimed at developing hypersonic missiles, glide vehicles, and eventually aircraft. But progress has been slower than hoped. Test failures are, honestly, pretty common. Technical challenges, particularly around thermal management and materials that can withstand hypersonic flight, remain unresolved. China's approach has been different. Rather than relying on incremental improvements to existing technologies, Chinese researchers have pursued more radical concepts, like the oblique detonation ramjet, that promise greater performance but require fundamentally new engineering approaches. It's a riskier strategy, but if successful, it could yield breakthroughs that leapfrog conventional development paths. This pattern isn't unique to aerospace. In fields like quantum computing, artificial intelligence, and renewable energy, China has increasingly pursued high-risk, high-reward research strategies. The government provides long-term funding, insulates researchers from short-term commercial pressures, and accepts that, well, many projects will fail. But when they succeed, the results can be transformative. So where does this leave us? The oblique detonation ramjet engine remains unproven in operational terms. We haven't seen it fly on an actual aircraft. We don't know if it can transition from lab conditions to real-world deployment. And we don't know if China has overcome the countless engineering challenges, materials, cooling, control systems, fuel management, that accompany hypersonic flight. But the announcement itself matters. It signals China's ambitions, demonstrates its research capabilities, and forces competitors to respond. The United States can no longer assume it holds an insurmountable lead in aerospace technology. Other nations, Russia, India, even smaller players like Japan and Australia, are also investing in hypersonic research, recognizing that whoever masters this technology first will shape the strategic landscape for decades to come. For China, the oblique detonation ramjet represents more than a technical achievement. It's a symbol of national resurgence, proof that decades of investment in science and engineering are paying off. It's validation of a strategy that prioritizes self-reliance over dependence on foreign technology. And it's a challenge to the established order, a declaration that China intends to lead, not follow, in the technologies that will define the 21st century. Whether that declaration becomes reality depends on what happens next. If China successfully deploys hypersonic aircraft powered by detonation engines, the implications will be profound, militarily, economically, and geopolitically. If the technology falters, it will be remembered as an ambitious but ultimately unsuccessful gamble. But either way, one thing is certain. The era of unchallenged Western dominance in aerospace is ending, and the age of hypersonic flight, whenever it arrives, will be shaped as much by Chinese innovation as by American ingenuity. The race is on, and the finish line is Mach 16.